Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for our Family Scouting webinar. My name is Abby McDoolan and I am the District Executive in the William Henry Harrison District, helping to deliver scouting to families on the west side of Cincinnati. Through our webinar this evening, we are excited to share with you some updates on Family Scouting, provide some resources, and help to answer any questions that you may have or have heard from families in your unit. Tonight, you'll hear from some of our top council volunteers and leaders. So, let's get started. Here's an overview of the topics we'll cover this evening. First, we'll hear from Tom Duggar, the Dan Beard Council Scout Executive and CEO. We'll provide some clarification on the name change for our 11 to 17 year old program and also see an interview with Michael Serbaugh, the Chief Scout Executive and CEO of the Boy Scouts of America. Then, Doug Siebenbergen will share with you a number of updates on Cub Scout program details, training information, procedures for camping and activities, facility updates, and I know some of you are very excited about this, a preview of uniforms and supplies. Next, Ken Bruner will discuss our charter partners and how your unit can begin to prepare for the fall. And then, Amy Gath will share with you some really exciting new marketing materials and free promotional materials for your unit. I'll come back a little later to let you know where you can get all of these great resources and Michael Kostek will provide a short preview on our updates for our 11 to 17 year old program. Thank you to those who submitted your questions in advance of tonight. We have attempted to cover all of them in our materials, but if you think of something as we move through the evening, please feel free to submit your question in the comment box on your screen. We'll collect these questions and attempt to cover them in a Q&A session following the presentation. If we aren't able to answer your question tonight, we'll work to find the answer and get it posted to www.dnbeard.org forward slash family scouting. All right, to start us off, I am excited to introduce our CEO, Tom Duggar. Hello, I'm Tom Duggar, Scout Executive of the Dan Beard Council. Thank you for coming tonight to hearing our story about family scouting. We are excited about the opportunities facing us in the Boy Scouts of America now to expand our service to the American family in a way unlike ever before. Our mission remains the same. Many things about scouting have not changed, and we're excited that we have a greater calling today than perhaps ever before to serve young people by instilling in them the values of the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. Today's family dynamic is is more important than ever before. And families want to do things together. That's exciting. They want to have their young people involved in activities that build character, citizenship, and personal fitness in their daily lives. Tonight, we want to share with you some of the details of family scouting and what that will mean for the Boy Scouts of America going forward. We're excited about our expanded service to the American family and how we can help strengthen the human dynamic within our communities by building a new generation of leaders, both men and women, that will carry forward the great traditions of the scouting movement. Family scouting is about giving families new options to do things together in a way that it simplifies their life. And we all could use a little simplification in our lives today. So what you'll hear tonight will be about this wonderful new opportunity of service that we have in the Boy Scouts of America to help strengthen our families, strengthen communities, and instill in young people the values of the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. We must do our best as a local council to help strengthen our communities so that we shape the generation of leaders that will come after us mothers, fathers, leaders of our communities, men and women. So thank you for coming out here tonight and hearing this story. And we look forward to seeing you along the scouting trail. Thank you, Tom, for sharing those comments. Now, I'd like to turn our program over to Michael Kostick. Michael? Hello, everyone listening. My name is Michael Kostick, and I'm the Deputy Scout Executive of the Dan Beard Council. I'll be with you a few times during this evening's webinar. The first thing I'm on the schedule to cover is the Scouts BSA name, and more importantly, to try to clear up something that's not always been reported accurately in the news or on social media. The question of the day may be, did we just change our name? And the answer is a resounding no. The Boy Scouts of America is still the Boy Scouts of America. So you might ask, what's the Scouts BSA name that I heard about? Scouts BSA is the name of one of our programs that we're offering. 
Let's take a look at this chart that tries to map things out. You'll see on the left is a list of all of the programs that we offer right now. There is Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Venturing, Sea Scouts, and Exploring. Then on the right, you can see what's changing as we move forward towards Family Scouting. Cub Scouting is still going to be Cub Scouting, and we're going to talk a lot about that program tonight. Then you'll see the program we currently call Boy Scouts is going to be branded as Scouts BSA. This is the program for middle and high school age youth. Boys and girls will be in separate troops but working through the same program. We'll talk a little more about that program towards the end of our webinar tonight, and we'll also do another webinar just on Scouts BSA a little later in the year. There are some national events this summer where some additional program details are going to be announced, and we'll bring all of that news to you when we get it. Also on the list, you'll see Venturing and Sea Scouting and Exploring. Those programs aren't changing, as they've all been open to boys and girls for many years. Thanks for taking the time to listen tonight. We appreciate what you do for scouting, and we're excited to be working together on this next adventure. Up next, we're going to hear a few comments from our Chief Scout Executive, Mike Serbach, and then after that, we're going to jump into the Cub Scout programming and its details with Doug Siebenbergen, a longtime Council Volunteer. Welcome to this special one-on-one -on -one interview with our Chief Scout Executive, Mike Serbaugh, about the BSA's historic move to welcome girls into scouting. I'm Brian Wendell, Senior Editor of Boys Life Scouting and Eagles Call, and joining me is our Chief Scout Executive, Mike Serbaugh. Hello. Hey, Brian. How are you? Good to see you. I know you wanted to hear directly from the volunteers. So what happened is I, I wrote a blog post asking readers for their questions. First of all, how we got to this point, how this decision was made. Can you kind of walk us through how we got to this, uh, this historic decision? I sure can. You know, one of the things that I would invite everyone listening to do if you're interested in getting a real deep dive into the process, uh, we did a live stream. It was called a town hall. Right. And this was a pretty informal session that I had just with our National Service Center staff to give them the background on how we arrived at this decision. But I get into a lot of the details about how we went through the process overall, both at the, the council level and then nationally. But I'll give you just a, a real Reader's Digest version of, of how we got to this point. You know, we've been on a journey for many years of trying to figure out how do we serve the whole family. And every task force that we come up with, it always comes back to families are looking for ways that they participate together. We, we have really good market intelligence that shows Hispanic families, Asian families, they're looking to enter as a family. So youth programs that are dynamically growing, you know, they're, they're just in some way bringing that entire family in. And what we found is that the family dynamics have changed quite a bit and the way that parents are looking to access programs has changed. So with all of that in the background, you know, we started talking about how's a way that we could address this. And the idea came forward that, you know, there's a lot of girls that are currently participating in Cub Scout packs. We didn't know how many. Uh, the more we started talking about it, the more we found this is more common than not. And it really was, again, back to the desire of families to come together and participate. Most people felt involving girls in Cub Scouting is fairly easy. You know, we've already got girls involved in a lot of activities, but to maintain the integrity of what's really worked in scouting, you know, we didn't want to mess with that single gender model. Right. And so that was the stall point that we always got to, that people said, you know, you got to create a family program. Well, one of two things has to happen. Either you create a completely different program and you would hope that the outcomes you get are similar to what we already know we get in scouting, or you let girls participate in Cub Scouting. Now our final question from the volunteers is uh, from Eric D., an assistant scoutmaster from the Chief Seattle Council. And Eric said he's, he's on board with the change, but he was wondering how to best encourage other scouters that they encounter to embrace this change. So how, how can people like Eric and others out there um, help you know encourage their fellow scouters to, uh, to embrace this? What I have found is that a lot of scout executives that have encountered people that initially very upset and their picture is you're going to ruin Boy Scouting and what it does for young men because now you're going to have girls in there too. What they've invited them to do is go to that live stream piece and uh, there's been about 12,000 views of that already and most of them have said that those scouters come back and say, you know, I hadn't really thought about that. It makes a lot of sense. There's logic to what you're doing. I would just encourage all of our scouters, just talk about it. 
And what you're going to find is that everybody has a very personal experience with this. Uh, I had a friend of mine said, you know, there, there was a scouter and he named him and he said, I was sure he was going to be completely against this and hate this idea. And the first thing he said is, I've got two granddaughters. They're going to join the second that you open it up. And he said, I'd love for one of them to be an Eagle Scout. Yeah. So it's, uh, I think just talking about it. That's great. And any parting words for, uh, for the viewers at home? Uh, it's, uh, thank you for the opportunity, Brian. I, I appreciate what you do, and, and I would encourage everybody out there that's a scouter, you know, go, go to Brian on scouting. There's always a lot of good stuff there, and, and we need to hear your thoughts. As you find things that uh, we may have missed, invariably there's going to be a couple of I's that we need to dot and T's to cross, and you know, we're going to need to know those things. So please keep the communication and tell us what you think. But I hope you're as enthused and as excited as I am about this. I am just hearing daily from hundreds of and hundreds of scouters that are chomping at the bit and ready to get their daughters involved in scouting. So we're looking forward to a great adventure in 18. Well, thanks for your kind words and thanks for Thank your time Thank you, sir. All right, Appreciate it. Hello, my name is Doug Siebenbergen and I'm the P Vice President of Program for the Danbeard Council. I'm also a lifelong scouter here in Cincinnati. I've grown up through the program and I am so excited about where we're headed. In the next few moments, I'm going to give you an overview of how packs and dens can be formed to support girls in the Cub Scouting program. I'm also going to address specific updates in training, camping, and activities. Finally, I'll give you a preview of some of the new uniforms and supplies that are coming. So let's begin with program organization. It is the charter partner's choice about whether or not to include girls in the Cub Scout program. If the option to include both boys and girls is selected, boys and girls would have to be in separate dens, but they are still in the same pack. Each den would have its own den leader. This hybrid model builds on the benefit of single gender program while also providing character and leadership opportunities for boys and girls. One question we get is, can separate boy and girl dens work on the same activity at the same time together? There is no set rule or guideline on this. If appropriate, this can be treated the same way as two dens of the same gender working together. It will be up to the good judgment of the leaders to decide what is best for their unit. Pack-wide activities like the Pinewood Derby would be run as normal and with all the Cub Scouts participating. Another question that we're hearing is let's, let's say there are two girls and three boys who are the age of wolf cubs. Instead of two small dens, can we just combine them into one den of five youth? At first glance, this seems obvious to be a good idea. But keeping things gender specific is very important. The BSA reports that all of its research and testing shows that keeping our programs gender specific is critical. So it's going to be very important that leaders maintain the integrity of having all boy dens and all girl dens. Having pack activities with all dens is okay, but regular den activities must observe this rule. You might ask yourself, where are we going to get all the additional leaders to run these separate dens? Well, PACs will want to work to get den leaders in the same way that they always have. But keep in mind that many of the girls that are going to be joining our program initially already have brothers in this program, and the parents are already there. And perhaps, if addressed properly, the parents will be more interested in investing more of their time in this program that's just expanded for their family. Now, for the units that are bringing in just girls, that's okay because they're going to have more enthusiastic people coming along with them. They're going to be excited about the program we're offering. So take advantage of that while it's there and let that continue to build over time. It's important to make sure that you give a, an understandable task and a, an awareness of the training that's available for these new leaders to be able to do their task with joy and happiness so that they don't feel a burden. I've been asked, are there any rules about gender of the unit leaders? And may an adult male lead an, a girl unit? 
And the answer is, of course, yes. Women have been leading boy units all this time uh, since the beginning of the Cub Scout program. Too deep leadership is very important, and in the girl program, it is important that one of those leaders be a female leader, especially as we get started in this new program. The policy of having a female trained adult leader in a unit that has girls is consistent with our policy for many years now in venturing and it has enabled girls to be more comfortable and enabled them to be able to grow in that program. And I'm sure it will do the same thing in our Cub Scout program as well. Now I want to speak to you a bit about training. Youth protection training is required for all BSA volunteers. We all know this. It is available online and there is also a few opportunities that we will be offering in the council over the next year. Basic training is for Cub Scout leaders is available online at myscouting.org. While online training is convenient, it is designed to provide support to a new adult leader in small modules answering questions as they present themselves. In-person training is known to provide more insight and inspiration to volunteers, as well as connecting volunteers as resources. In-person training can be arranged through your district training committee. Your district executive can connect you with experienced leaders who are standing by to help you. Another question we've received is, will the basic training for Cub Scouting be modified to include some specifics on working with girls addressing their specific developmental needs? Obviously the answer is yes. Our training materials continue to evolve over time as things change. And as we learn more, we're going to feel the responsibility to make sure that our unit leaders are fully aware and prepared to give the best possible program to our youth. We've involved many experts in childhood development and we're very proud of where we're headed. However, we will be continually learning and that information will be passed along the best we can. It is important to remember that this program is not being modified for girls. The program that the girls are looking forward to is the same program we've been offering to boys. There will be slight modifications uh, that are obvious for girls, but the program, the advancement, uh, the books, they are going to remain the same as far as the program goes. Now let's talk about camping. Since camping in the Cub Scout program includes the entire family, the Cub Scout Outdoor Family Camping Guidelines are still in place regardless of how the pack is designed. Camping guidelines for 11 to 17 year old scouts are just now starting to be announced. We'll cover that a little bit later in the webinar and we're also planning to hold another webinar just on the Scouts BSA later this year. Policies like Too Deep Leadership are still in place and should be used in the same way they've been used before. Just remember that if you have a van of girls or a pack of girls you need to have at least one adult female leader. If your activities include bathrooms and shower facilities, it's important to plan and communicate your arrangements for these facilities. Separate facilities must be available for boys and for girls, as well as for adult female and adult male. Communicating this can be tricky at times, but as demonstrated by our MYLT scouts, it can be done fairly easily if it's well understood. At MYLT each year there are female venturers who participate in the program and what the scouts will do in that camping environment is they'll put a sign that's reversible at the entrance to the latrine or bathroom facility so that one, one way it can say male, the other way it can say female and when the bathroom is occupied it can be marked accordingly. This isn't ideal for long term, but uh, the Danbeer Council is already working hard to get prepared for our restroom facilities to be modified to accommodate young women 
across our, our camp facilities. Okay, I'm just about finished with my part. All scholars and scouts love swag. And Cub Scouting is going to get some new swag. Uh, everyone's been asking, what about uniforms? Well, Cub Scouts continue to get to wear the blue uniforms. That's boys and girls. The Scout Shop will begin stocking shirts specifically made for girls, but they'll look the same. In addition to shorts, there will also be a thing called skorts. I'll admit I didn't know what that was. I had to look it up. I looked on the internet and apparently that is the combination of shorts and a skirt. So as far as Weeblos Scouts, they continue to wear and they should all be wearing the khaki uniform. One change to the uniforming has come in the, in the color of the neckerchiefs. Each phase of the Cub Scout program is now themed by color. Yellow stands for lions, orange for tigers, red for wolves, and blue for bears. Yellow and red are changes to the current practice. The new neckerchiefs will be released after the old blue and gold neckerchiefs are sold out. Speaking of color coding, the new handbooks that have been issued will be printed in the same colors as the neckerchiefs. I'm excited to tell you that I just stopped in the scout shop and the new handbooks have arrived. The old handbooks are still stocked on the shelves, but the new color-coded handbooks are sitting right next to them. The books are very similar, in fact, inside the requirements, the text, the parent's guide, all of that is still the same format as previously printed. But the new handbooks have uh, photographs that include girls and boys. I'm happy to see that because it girls just like boys are going to be reading those books and as they do they're going to see pictures of girls that look like them and that should help them feel a sense of belonging and help them visualize the trail that's ahead of them. The new books feature both boys and girls doing Cub Scout activities. I hope this information has been helpful to you and I thank you for your willingness to support our Scouts as we venture down this trail. As you go down the trail, let us know where we can help you uh, to make this experience even better for your Scouts. Thanks, Doug. That was a fantastic overview of many of the new program updates. Hi, I'm Ken Bruner and I'm the Director of Development and Marketing here at the Dan Beard Council. I'd like to share a little bit more about what's next, your PACS Charter Partner, and what your PAC can do to start to prepare. As we mentioned earlier, the Charter Partner, that's the place that sponsors your PAC, has the choice on which programs to offer as Family Scouting begins. We hope that every PAC will want to participate in Family Scouting and offer programs for both boys and girls. However, we understand that some Charter Partners may want to stick with offering programs just for boys. That could be because boy-only programs meet their needs or because they have another program that works well for them. As a unit working with your charter partner, it's important for you to understand how the charter partner feels about this matter. However, if you're as excited as I am about family scouting, you probably want to get started right away. We do have to slow down just for a second to get our ducks in a row and get ready for the fall. We all want to do this right and that requires a little bit of planning. First, thank you so much for being here tonight. Learning about family scouting is a critical first step. After you watch this and read through some of the materials on our website, you might want to talk with your other leaders in your pack. We hope that they are excited too. The next thing you need to do is to talk with a leader of your charter partner. You'll need to let him or her know that you're interested in family scouting and ask if it's okay to get started. It will be important for everyone to do this by the end of June. However, the sooner the better. Your district executive can help you with this, but you know your charter partner best, so we think you should be a part of this conversation. Once you've done that, 
head over to www.danbeard.org slash family scouting and click the orange button for family sign up to indicate your plans for your pack. Even if your pack is going to remain boy only, we want to hear that from you. We are already making preparations to get ready for the fall, so your district executive may also follow up with you. There is a great infographic that talks about family scouting, the same one that Doug referenced earlier, that will be helpful for you when you talk with your charter partner. We'll make sure the link is up and easy to find at www.danbeard.org slash family scouting. Now, the next thing to think about is making preparations for family scouting in the fall. And you might think, where am I going to get all of the leaders to run these additional units? Well, chances are that as many new boys and new girls join your pack, you'll also get many new parents who can be involved. Recruiting new DEN leaders really hasn't changed. Having a good parent orientation is key. And I have found that most often, when parents are approached in the right way, they're excited to take an active role in participating in scouting with their child. But it's up to you to set a tone of teamwork and working together up front. You can say something like this. Explain to your parents how scouting is different than other activities like sports because one of the key purposes of scouting is for you to get a quality time with your child. And while you're having a ton of fun together, you'll also be learning some important life lessons and skills along the way. This means we all play a part in making this program great for our kids. Having a one-on-one -on -one conversation like that goes a long way. This may take a little bit of preparation and effort, but it's well worth it. We've all seen just how incredible the scouting program can be with a great DEN leader. You can learn more about recruiting new DEN leaders and much, much more with this key next step. That is, making sure someone from your PAC attends one of the Join Scout Night trainings. Here to share just a little bit more about Join Scout Night and some of the really exciting new marketing materials we have is Amy Gath. Amy? Hi, my name is Amy Gath and I am a volunteer just like many of you. In my daytime role, I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Formica Corporation. As a Scout volunteer, I serve as your Vice President of Marketing on the board and perhaps more importantly, I'm a Cub Scout mom. As we embark on this exciting new time in Scouting Together, we want to make sure to provide each of you with the new resources and materials that you need for fall recruiting. With the rollout of the Family Scouting Program, we have a real opportunity as a movement to refresh some of our marketing materials and unify under a new scouting theme. So first and foremost, I am excited to share with you our new scouting campaign theme, Scout Me In. Here in Dan Beard, we're really excited about using the theme. In focus groups with scouts, they immediately picked up on the association, Count Me In. This makes Scout Me In both a statement and a pledge to scouting that includes everyone. For kids, Scout Me In is a call to action. For families, it's a call for togetherness, family bonding, and participating together. And for the BSA, it is a call for celebration of this historic opportunity. Here are just a few examples of how the new theme would be incorporated into our various programs. In addition to our new theme, we will also be providing you with lots of resources to help you with your unit's Join Scout Night recruitment efforts. The materials will feature an exciting new marketing campaign and images to capture our Scout Me In theme. Here's a style board that showcases an example of the types of images that you can expect to see in this year's materials. Our style will be full of new and vibrant images that are action-oriented and show scouts right in the middle of the action. And our messaging will be warm, inviting, and inspirational. Now you can see a draft example of what a few of our materials will look like. This one says, Escape the Great Indoors, Scout Me In. It shows action, friendship, and fun. Similar to past years, yard signs, flyers, posters, and more will be available. 
All of these resources will be distributed at a series of Join Scout Night trainings that are offered throughout the Council during the last few weeks of July. So it's important that someone from your unit attends one of these trainings. We'll distribute materials and provide some tips on how best to attract new Scouts and adults to your unit. Here is a schedule of the available trainings throughout the Council. You can register to attend one of these events at www.danbeard.org backslash join Scout Night. We hope that you are as excited as we are about the new campaign and materials. I know that my pack and my kids think it's awesome. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Amy. Those are some really exciting materials. As I mentioned earlier, I'm Abby McDoolan, District Executive of the William Henry Harrison District, and we want to make sure that you get all of the resources available to you. More and more resources for family scouting and cub scouting are becoming available every day. To make finding things as easy as possible, we're going to make www.danbeard.org forward slash family scouting a one-stop shop where you'll be able to find all of the key items from Nationals and DBC. Right now, there are some links to documents prepared by Nationals, including a great FAQ. There are also some great videos that promote the family scouting idea. Plus, there's my favorite. There's a new video that's called a crash course on Cub Scouting for parents and families new to the program. It's only about three minutes long, so let's take a look at it now. Hello and welcome to Cub Scouting. We're glad you and your child have decided to join us for family fun and adventure. You probably have some questions, so we will start off by answering the five most frequently asked by new families. Cub Scouts wear a shirt, hat, neckerchief, belt, pants, shorts or sport, and socks to meetings and special events, like the uniform seen here. During outdoor activities like hiking or camping, they wear a t-shirt. They also need a handbook to learn about and record all their Cub Scout activities. You can get your child's uniform and handbook for their Scout grade level at your local Scout Shop or online at scoutshop.org. You and your child are now part of a small group based on grade and gender called a DEN. This group meets two to three times a month to do Cub Scout adventure activities. Parents in your DEN work together to coordinate activities and help during DEN meetings. Two parents serve as volunteers, the DEN leader, an assistant DEN leader, or co-DEN leaders. Together they help plan activities and use the DEN meeting plans to deliver the Cub Scout program. The pack is made up of multiple DENs. Cub Scouts and their families come together monthly at a pack meeting to engage in fun activities and to recognize the youth for their achievements. Some months, these meetings may be a special activity, a banquet, or an outdoor event like a family camp out. Each Cub Scout grade level is known as a rank and has an animal or a symbol associated with it. Advancement refers to the completion of the required adventure activities in the handbook. Most adventure activities will be completed during DEN meetings, but some are worked on as a family. As the youth completes each activity, the handbook is signed by the DEN leader or the parent. Once all required activities are completed, the youth will earn an adventure belt loop. After earning a number of adventures and completing other requirements, they will be awarded their rank badge. This badge is sewn onto their uniform to show their accomplishment. Akela is the Cub Scout term for leader. At home, you are Akela. The den leader is Akela during den meetings, and the Cub Master serves as Akela during pack meetings. All who are Akela have a responsibility to ensure that they and the youth in their pack or den act in accordance with the Scout oath and law. That's it for now. We're excited to welcome you into the Cub Scouting family, where adventure beckons and fun times await. Wasn't that great? We'll keep putting up links for new things as soon as they become available.
Also, here at www.danbeard.org forward slash Family Scouting, there are some of the tools that Ken mentioned for sharing the news about Family Scouting with your charter partner. Also, the infographic that Michael referenced that explains Scouts VSA and how Boy Scouts of America is still our name is available on the site too. Finally, a lot of the cool Scout Me In stuff that Amy told us about is on the site as well. As Amy mentioned, Scout Me In is going to be the theme for our fall membership drive called Join Scout Night. Be sure to get someone from your pack to attend one of our great Join Scout Night training events in July. You can see the list and sign up at www.dnbeard.org forward slash join scout night. One last reminder, the links for youth protection training as well as online courses for Cub Scout leaders is available at www.dnbeard.org forward slash family scouting. We'll make sure a link for this is easy to find on the family scouting page. Thank you so much for listening. Now, Michael Kostick is going to share a preview of our older scout program for 11 to 17 year olds. Michael? As you mentioned at the beginning of our broadcast tonight, we're going to do a separate webinar just about Scouts BSA a little later this year. There are a few national events this summer where some additional details will be shared. However, we'd like to share some of the highlights that we are already aware of tonight. After we go through this section, we're going to do a Q&A session. We've been keeping track of the questions submitted as we've been broadcasting tonight. We are going to try to keep our focus primarily on Cub Scouting tonight. However, we'll answer any questions about Scouts BSA as time permits and if we know the answers. But by all means, please submit your Scouts BSA questions as they'll help us plan our next webinar. First, let's take a look at the program structure. This is going to be a little different than Cub Scouting. In Scouts BSA are middle and high school age programs. The boys and girls will be in separate troops. A charter partner might choose to have a troop for boys and another charter partner could elect to only have a troop for girls. Additionally, a charter partner could elect to have two troops, one for boys and another for girls. These troops would have separate scoutmasters and their own programs. However, if it is the charter partner's preference, they could share the same committee. The national office is calling this a linked troop. The graphic on your screen shows this. On the left, you see a model for a boy-only troop. The middle is a girl-only troop. And on the right, you'll see the model for a boy troop and a girl troop from the same charter partner with a shared committee. One question that we've already received is, can link troops share a scoutmaster? The answer to that is no. A chartered organization should have separate scoutmasters for a boy troop and a girl troop. Scouts BSA will start in February 2019. This allows troops to be formed as Weeblos are getting ready to cross over. You'll note on the timeline chart that the National Office has prepared that materials to support the launch of Scouts BSA will become available in our scout shops in January. Here are a few more things that we know about Scouts BSA. Link troops will be able to share the same unit number. There will be a prefix code used, similar to what the Danbeard Council already does with our Cub Scout packs. Even though we don't always say the number, all of our packs start with a 3, so pack 28 is really pack 3028. Boy troops and girl troops can coordinate outings together, just as two troops can do now. The Guide to Safe Scouting and Youth Protection Guidelines will provide guidance on the rules used for those events. The FAQ from the National Office includes the question, can a boy troop and a girl troop meet as one big troop? And the answer to that is, opening and closings of meetings can be done together or separate depending on the space and the desire of the chartered organization and the troop leadership. The other components of the scout meeting should be run separately. Similarly to Cub Scouts, the Danbeard Council has already begun studying any needed renovations to its camping properties to make them as accommodating as possible to all of the Council Scouts. As we learn more, we'll continue to share news about this exciting change. Now, we're going to move into the Q&A section of tonight's program. We're going to pause for about 30 seconds to get ourselves coordinated, and then we'll begin. Thanks again for tuning in tonight. We're glad you're here. As we get set up, if you have any questions that you'd like to submit, you can enter them in the comment field on the left side of your screen, 
or by hitting the question mark at the top of the presentation screen to submit a question. Okay, we want to help to answer the questions that all of you have been submitting. One question that we received early on was whether or not the presentation would be available online. Yes, we've been recording the entire webinar, including this question session here at the end, and we will post the entire thing online at www.dambeard.org slash family scouting tomorrow after the webinar has concluded. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Doug to answer a question about Lions uniforms. So, we have another question asks, is there any paperwork required from the chartered organization that indicates their decision about including girls or participating in family scouting? The best way to indicate this is actually to use the link on the dambeard.org slash family scouting website uh, that asks you to enroll in family scouting. It's the orange button or link that was referenced earlier during the presentation. Click that link in order to fill out the form that's online. When you fill out the form, this will indicate that you've spoken to the charter partner and that uh, you intend to participate in family scouting or, in some cases, that you may continue to have a boy pack only. A few people have said that they've struggled to hear the answer, so I'm going to repeat the Lions uniform question. The question was asked, what type of uniform will the Lions wear? Will they begin wearing the blue uniforms? Actually, Lions uniforms will not change. Lions will continue wearing the blue Lion t-shirts that they have been. There's also an optional cap and new neckerchief and slide. Both are suitable for wearing with the t-shirt. At this point in time, that is all of the questions we have currently received. So hopefully we answered most of your questions during our webinar this evening and that you really enjoyed the presentation. We look forward to continue working with you as we go forward in this new family scouting program. Please continue to let us know if you have any questions. Everybody have a good night. Thank you.